Hello Fingsters, and today we're going to be talking about namespaces in Python. And the topics we will cover is what exactly is a namespace and why are they used. And we'll discuss the four types of namespace that are used. And we'll show some of the commands that you can use to query the different namespaces and find out what they contain. Then we'll discuss scope and how that relates to namespace searches. And finally, we'll introduce the search route that Python uses to find names when they are referenced. So namespaces, when you create something in Python, you give it a name and it doesn't matter what it is. It could be a class, it could be a function, a variable. It has a name. And a namespace is simply the place that that name is retained. It's a filing system used by Python to store names and whatever values may be attached to those. Python uses the dictionary data type, and you'll all be familiar with that. And so in this situation, it uses the name as a key and the entity as the value. So if you assign x equals 10, x will be the key, 10 will be the value. There can be very many different namespaces. So you create a function, there is a new namespace that is created. So you can have plenty of namespaces, but there are four types you need to be aware of. And so starting at the highest level, you have the built-in namespace. And these are the part of Python that when you start your interpreter, they're already there. They're things that you will have come across. They may be functions. Uh, print, for instance, is a name which is in the built-in namespace. Global is when you open a script and start to code. And so when you assign uh, an entity to a variable, um, it will be in the global namespace. If you have functions and they're nested, the outer function is called the enclosing function and it will have a namespace. And obviously the one that is within that is the enclosed function with its own namespace. And then there is the local namespace and that's the one within a function or the level that you're currently working on. And these are important for when we start talking about scope and the search route that Python uses when it's looking to find and return to you a name or a piece of data. So when you're querying each namespace, there are different queries you can use. There's the double underscore built-in and it returns the standard names that come with Python. There's the globals and that returns the names within the main body of your code and locals will return the names within the level from which it's called. And don't worry too much about these because I will show you these in action in code in a minute. So scope and LEGB. Scope is something that assists Python to return the correct names when referenced in code. And, and I will show you a piece of code shortly where we have the same variable name used at different levels of the code. And this scope is the thing that assists Python to return the correct answer when we call that variable. And we need to understand that a name has a meaning within a specific scope. So what gets returned depends on the scope within which you reference a name. And Python will search a specific hierarchy to find it. So it will start looking locally. And if it can't find the name locally, it'll step up. And if there's an enclosing function, it will look in there. And if it can't find it there, it'll look globally. And then ultimately, we'll look at the built-ins. If it just cannot find the name that you're looking for, it will return a name error exception. And we'll step through this in the code very shortly so you can see how this works to prove that that is the, the way it works. And the mnemonic to remember is LEGB. Just make up something for that. Let's eat green bananas. But that's the, that's the uh, search pattern that Python follows when it's looking for a name. So that said, let's go do some coding. So we spoke about built-ins and the built-in namespace. So we've got the interpreter running right now on screen. 
and we have nothing written apart from we've asked it to print directory double underscore built-ins. And that's going to tell us all of those names that are already loaded in the built-in namespace. So let's do that now. And I'll make that a little larger so you can see it. And so all of these things here are already loaded in Python. And some of them you will know. As we get to here, um, all, any, bool, a lot of things that you use in your coding. Eval, they're all in there. So they're preloaded by Python and that's in the built-in namespace. So that's the highest level or the highest of the hierarchy, if you like, in terms of namespaces. So let's now go across and look at the global namespace. So here we are now in the global namespace and this is where you've opened a um, script and you're about to start coding. And what you'll see in this piece of code that I've done here is I've simply imported a module date time and I've created a variable and assigned a string entity to it. It's the only two things I've done on this page. And now I can query this with the globals command that we spoke about earlier. So if we print globals, it will return all of those things that currently sit in the global namespace. So let's do that. Now there's a lot of things in there that possibly won't make a lot of sense depending on uh, how much you've delved into this. But if we scroll down towards the end, these are all the things that load up when you open a script in Python. But if we get down to here, you'll notice at the end we've got date time and then the module date time and the path to find that particular module. And again, we have string and we have this is a global variable. So what we have up here, we imported date time. There it is there and there's where it can be found. We created a variable string and passed a string entity to it. And you can see that there. And this is a good example of the dictionary data type that Python uses to store things in the namespace. And you can see we have a key and we have a value. So we have a key value pair, which is the standard dictionary data type. And this is how Python controls names and namespaces. So that's fine as far as it goes. Let's just go across and have a look at if we create a function now and see what that does for us. So same code, but now all we've done here is we have, we've still got the import date time, we've still got the string and we've got a global variable string there. But now we've defined a function called print string and within it we've created another string variable. So we have one out there, which is this is a global variable and we've got one in here, which is this is a local variable. And then what we're going to do is we're first of all going to print globals, which we did previously, because I want you to see where the print string lands in terms of the name, which namespace it goes into. So let's do that now. So as before, all the ones that you saw previously, but now you have the date time module, which has been loaded here. You've got string, this is a global variable, and then you've got the print string function. But you don't have anything from within the function. So you now have three things sitting in the global namespace. There's the date time, the string variable, and you have the print string function. But that's it. If we want to see what's within the print string function, we have to go inside and have a look. And that's why I've done here a print locals command. And that's the other command we discussed. So globals will give us what's in this broader script. Locals will give us what's within the level we're working in and or where we call it. And that's 
this particular function. So let's just call that now. So if I call the print string function, there. You've got the globals one here, which we've already looked at, but now you've got the locals. And this is the response from the locals call from within the print string function. And there's only one name in that namespace, and that is the string equals this is a local variable. And there's the dictionary, the key and value pair. So locals will give you what's in the local namespace. Globals will give you what's in the global namespace. And obviously built-ins will give you the built-ins. So that's fine as far as that goes. But what if we get into the nested function discussion? So let's go and have a look at that. So here we have some nested functions. So once again, we have the global string up the top there. We have the print string. Um, string, the string is held in an enclosing namespace, called that because it encloses another function. And obviously print string one is the enclosed function. And then we're going to call a print and we're going to call locals on that print string function. And then within the enclosed function, we've done this string is held in a local namespace and we've called print locals on that as well. And it should return us what's held within that print string one function. So let's run that now just to show you how that works. So as you can see, even though we have the different types of namespace here, you could call this the local one here. You could call this one the enclosed, enclosing. You can call this global. And then we have the built-in, which is the one which wraps around everything. But at the end of the day, you can use locals wherever you happen to be, and it will give you the names in that namespace. So I've called locals within print string one, and it's returned us that. I've called locals within print string and it's returned us that. And if you call locals in the global space, it will return the globals as well. So locals will give you whatever namespace you happen to call it within, which is an important point to remember. So let's just get into scope a little here, because if you remember, when we're going to go and do a search, we're going to start if I call uh, a print for string here, it will first look here, then it will go to enclosing. So it'll start local L, it'll go to enclosing, so E, it'll go to global G, and then it'll go and look in built-ins B, L E G B. So we've spoken about that before. Let me show you how that works. So in this code, this is the legb in action. So once again, we have the global variable string. We have a function with another string. The string is held in an enclosing namespace. We have a nested function, print string one, which has got string. The string is held in a local namespace. And at that lowest hierarchy, we're going to ask it to print string. So let's do that, see what it returns. And so it's returned, this string is held in a local namespace. So it's returned this particular string here, which is unsurprising because we called print string. We actually referenced that. And the first place we know that Python's going to look is within the local namespace. But what if there isn't one there? So let's take that out. So there's no string in there now. Let's run the code again and see what it returns for us. So it couldn't find it in the local because it's not there. So it's now stepped up to the enclosing and it's returned that string. This string is held in enclosing namespace. So it's found it and it's returned the value that we're looking for. But let's take that out too. And then let's run the code again. 
So there you are. It's now stepped up again in the hierarchy and it's now looking in the global namespace. And it's found it, string, this is a global variable and that's what it's returned. So let's take that out and see what happens now. And of course, you know from here that it's going to go and look in the built-ins. So it started local, went to enclosing, it's gone to global. Now we've taken every name, variable name called string out and we're still going to call print string and it will go and have a look in built-ins. And let's see what happens now. And of course, the name string does not live in built-ins either. And this is where you get your name error. Name string is not defined. So that proves that search pattern that Python uses to actually locate the name that you're calling. It starts in the local namespace where you call it from, and it will just keep stepping up through the hierarchy until it finds it or until it returns an error. So let's go back to the slides. So to summarize what we've done today, we discussed namespaces and why Python uses them. And we introduced the four types of namespace and the commands that you can use to query those. We discussed scope and how that assists Python to return the correct names. And then we introduced the LEGB search route when Python is looking for reference names. And we obviously showed you all of that in code to explain each of those concepts. So there you have it. I hope that namespace is a little clearer to you now. It's not a difficult concept, but it can be made to seem that way sometimes. It is simply a filing system to enable names and values to be stored by Python and a search route that allows them to be found. So thank you very much for listening. I hope that was useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.